let's uh, nope. start to handicap this week with. We'll start off with Santa Anita, and uh, just quickly go over this race since it is a Grade One race. Uh, this is the Beholder. So, uh, who do you like in this race, John? I like uh, Adair Manor, the the Baffert horse. Yeah, Adair I, Manor is the. This is the one to beat at five to two. Yeah. Um, I'm shocked that they, that so many horses showed up against him. Usually he's got, you know, he has a five-horse field. This is a nine-horse field. Can't believe with it. Some, with some shippers. And, and look, I mean, the, the one thing you'll say about it there, Manor, first of all, credit to Michael Lund Peterson, the owner, uh, for keeping this mare in training. She, do, she doesn't owe anybody anything. She's a five-year-old that's well accomplished. Uh, but when she came back last year, she did run second. Okay? So, you know, she didn't win off the similar layoff last year. There's no guarantee that she has to win it this year. Um, I like the fact that Spencer enters two horses in the Beholder race so that they can try and give themselves the trophy. That's always a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to go with a, a, a small upset. I, I, I thought we'd get higher odds. The horse is only three to one. Um, but green up from the Todd Pletcher barn. Uh, Todd Pletcher's not a guy who really travels a lot to California. He did it a few years ago with Vino Rosso when he won the Pacific Classic. Um, but you don't see him travel out a lot to these races um especially when there's there's big group ones um he, by the way Chad, he, he's sending two because of yeah. all of a sudden he's now the trainer of uh interstate date well they bought they yeah they bought it they they, yeah. they bought it well, we're probably um, you, have, you have two you have two foreign brad cox horses in the race in interstate daydream and uh turn or lose and uh both of them have very uh unique action if you watch them on the road um Look, I think Green Up is is an interesting horse. She trains like a really, really, really special horse. Um, I was waiting for her to all put it all together. She kind of hinted at it last year after Saratoga. I think she won the race at Parks or New York or whatever. Um, she Park. can run. She can run. It, it's it's just a matter of if she can if she can be a little bit more consistent. And it at three to one, it's a little bit tough to swallow. She's got uh, the same age. She has the same age that a damn manor has. The only reason I went to a damn manor is because she has the home field advantage. But sure, no, and that's there, there's a lot. There's a lot to be said for that for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know, look, a dare manor is what eight to five, and and this Philly's three to one. So no, they have of... a dare manor at five to two and green up wow. at three to one. Yeah. So I mean, you know, look, I, I I'm just gonna I'm gonna try and take a small upset just because, like I said, just. Adair Manor wasn't ready last year off the, a similar layoff, but I can't fault you at all, John, and I, I, I think it's a pretty chalky race. Yeah, we haven't good seen a, we haven't seen Adair Manor since the Breeders' Cup Distaff race, which was a, not a good race for this horse. Um, by the way, Green Up ran that six in that Parks win, bounced to the 13, and it came back much stronger this year uh, at the end of the year with a, with a nine. Actually, the next year, I should say, with a nine and an eight. So those are the two best uh, uh, races, actually, sheet-wise, that Greenup has had in consecutive races. Um, a couple of uh, long shots that, I, that I'm going to play. I don't know if you guys are going to play any long shots in Exactus, but I'm going to play the four, the seven, and the nine. The uh, seven is Kristen Bosch. I was I was actually putting the two, a damn matter, over the three, four, and seven. That's Greenup. Desert Dawn and Kristen Bond. All right, so there you go. We have the four and the seven. Desert Dawn. Desert Dawn Des Listen, Desert Dawn will go down. Uh, I I'm not afraid to talk out of school here. It's the greatest Arizona bred of all time. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I want to win that, Chad. <laughs> uh, Desert Dawn was runner-up in, uh, in two grade one stakes races. That was the uh, Clement L. Hirsch. And um, actually finished second twice to Adair uh, Manor. So... Um, and then the seven, John, you, as you mentioned, Kristen Bosch, uh, the long shot at 15 to one, did run two weights last year and also was, was pretty competitive. They were, sprinting. they were sprinting. I mean, the distance is the question mark about Kristen Bosch. That's the problem. Could, could she clear, though? No. How is she going to clear? There's plenty of speed. Your horse green up shows speed. A damn man it could go. Yeah. I, don't, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think uh, Kristen Bosch is clearing. Yeah. And then uh, the nine uh, window shopping did run his best race at Santa Anita at one mile last year. And boy, Mandela's having a hell of a meet at Santa Anita. So I just figured, why not? Uh, Chad, are you just going with the three? You got any exactas? No, I, I mean, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a tough race to really to, to go too heavy. I, I, I think at their manner and green up both figure. 
Okay. Um, but they both run races that can get them beat. But I mean, these other fillies, I just don't, I, I don't think they're like, there's no rising star in there in this group. There's not there. It's for me. It's just, no, there has to, they, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just, it's the race is fine. I mean, it's just, uh, it doesn't have a lot of pizzazz that's, to me. And that's the grade one beholder mile. And that should go off about 11 after 7 Eastern time on Saturday. That's race number 8. All right, now let's go to Tampa. we got back-to-back -back races, 10 and 11. Before we get to the uh, top race, the three-year-old race from Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Derby, we're going to talk about the race just before that, race 10, mile and a 16th on turf, the Florida Oaks. It's a grade 3 for Philly three-year-olds. So we got a three-year-old Philly race to talk about. Uh, and taking a look at uh, the top uh, contenders here as far as the morning line, uh, the four to, we have a seven to two shot dynamic pricing. That's the eleven, and we have a four to one shot Auster, Auster uh, a four to one shot. That's the six, uh, followed by the seven, a five to one shot style points. Those appear to be a, at least a morning line says those are the top three contenders. Let's start with dynamic pricing, the eleven horse. That's the Chad Brown Jose Ortiz combo, John, coming off at twelve last time out at Gulfstream. She's fine, except for two things. She's drawn outside. She's got the 11 post, and uh, she is making her first start attempt on the turf. She's obviously run on the turf in her first two starts, one at Aqueduct, one at Gulfstream. She did nothing wrong. She ran a 12 last time out. She's fine, but she's outposted, and she's going to be the favorite or well, close to it. There are horses drawn inside that are much bigger prices that have the same shot or a better shot. So. Chad, I'm, yeah, using but, her, I'm using her because I'm kidding a long price horse, but I would never key off of her. Look, I, I, Chad, Chad loves this race. Um, he's he sent good horses here in the past. It's the perfect prep into into the the stake at, at Keeneland, and then obviously um, the stake on on Derby Week as well. So um, he's very familiar with with running horses in this race. Um, and then Chad, we trust that. I mean, obviously he's got the, the Derby, the Derby favorite right now in Sierra Leone. Otherwise it's been a relatively quiet, um, year so far for Chad Brown, but this could be his, uh, his coming out party all, all day at Tampa. He's, he's littered with good choice with good chances in many, many races on the card. Austerrier, I don't know how do you pronounce that horse's name, a four to one shot. This is Brendan Walsh trained horse with Gaff Leone on board. First race of the year. Had, had a 22 to start his career with a win, break the maiden right away. Then he went to Kentucky Downs, ran a 14 in back-to-back -back wins. And, and look, I guess you could say he bounced a little bit in the next race, finished fifth, did not go off well in the Breeders' Cup. But then again, it's a Breeders' Cup race, so you can kind of forgive the horse there. But comes back again here in this race, John. What do you think about the six austere? Well, if you have sheets, you have them for a reason, and that's a bet against Auster because there are clearly five or six horses faster that'll be longer prices. Look, Auster's a horse, and we, we've come into this trap a few times so far doing the shows here. And look, credit to Brandon Walls for, for, for getting these two-year-olds ready to run um, and then kind of laying them up from two to three, which, which a lot of trainers like to do. Uh, but they have not been 100% ready to fire off the bench. Um, we've seen this time in and time out all season long. Uh, they run well, uh, but probably not well enough to win. So, uh, you know, a horse you can use on, you know, others probably a little bit better. And then the uh, other one before we get into uh, uh, the rest of the field that I mentioned was style points. The five to one shot. That's the seven horse. Castellano on board. Clement training. Back to back 15th coming in here. Uh, and this horse has run a mile on a 16th in all three career races. What about the seven style points, John? He's similar to the to Austere. I mean, they run 15s. That's not going to get it done. You're going to have to run a 12 or better to win. I mean, obviously, lightly raced horses could always improve, but uh, the line isn't that strong. And I think she's vulnerable. I think she's I'll tell you this though: the barn, the barn is very, very high on that horse. Style. It's very high on that horse. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, let's get to a couple of uh, longer shot horses. Uh, how about the five? Uh, how do you pronounce that horse's name, John? Was you're asking me? Wasikusu. Okay. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's an eight to one shot. Now this horse ran a twelve last time out. Matter of fact, this horse has gotten better each one of his races from twenty seven seventeen on dirt to fourteen twelve 
on turf. This is my top selection. There you I go. Love I, lo I mean, I love the price. I love uh, Mott's having another terrific year. Alvarado's, you know, well, what's wrong with this horse? She's done nothing wrong. She's 8-1. to one. She's got a strong line. She's got time since her last race. You know, I think the mile in the 16th is only good news for her. I love this horse. So that's yeah. my top selection. And, and she went off as the favorite the last two races. So Yeah. Chad? You're not going to get any argument from me. I mean, I think John... Uh... John's on to something there. All right. So we're all, so, uh, we're all in agreement with the five. All right. How about, let's see, about another horse in there, same odds. Uh, how about the eight, Destiny Star? Um, not The distance is definitely the question. Destiny Star ran a 15 last time out. Back-to-back -back wins. Of course, they bring this horse up because the, first, the last two races were both wins at Tampa. That's an edge. Believe me, it's important having a race over that course, you know, but, you know, she looks a little slower. Uh -huh. I mean, you could take a horse like the one poolside slim at 15 to one. Uh, that horse is breaking from the rail. She certainly has the number last time out that, you know, she's switching to turf today. I get it. She was on synthetic her first two races, but I think she has a shot. George Arnold isn't going to ship in here if he doesn't think he has a legitimate shot. And the horse has a, is a price. Even the three, Pharaoh's Wine. What's wrong with that horse at eight to one? Both right. of those horses there. One at a time. One at a time. Yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, so out of those three horses, Chad, Destiny Star, Poolside with Slim is the one, and Pharaoh's Wine the three. What do you think about those three horses? Well, based solely on the fact that Russ Arnold came out today and wrote an open letter uh, – the heist. The heist. Uh, I'm going to go with Rusty Arnold. Uh, he's suspended for seven days coming up. He got a $1,000 fine. Let's pay the $1,000 fine by winning this race. So uh, for, for no reason alone, there's absolutely no no uh, tangible reason why I think this horse is better than the Chad Brown horse. Um, I'll, I'll use them just to root for Rusty Arnold because uh, everything he said in the article was 1,000% correct. And Hissa continues to do ridiculous things. How about he's been in the business for like 40 years and has won $300 fine for being, for, I don't know, he didn't scratch a horse or didn't report his scratch. That's his only fine in 35 years as a trainer. And they want to suspend him. Wow. I mean, I can't say anything about fines because I, I have a little bit of a temper. So I've gotten fined a lot more than once. I can tell you that much. <laughs> what is he like? Is George Arnold like the Tom Landry of... Uh... He's an all-time trainer that, that operates on hay and oats. Okay. Yeah. He does love he does love his Kentucky Wildcats, though. By yeah. the way, Farrow's wine, as John uh, was uh, alluding to, if you take a look, he has uh, been better each time out on turf from 27, 19, 16 in 2023 to 13 in his first and only start this year, even though he ran sixth in that race, that grade three race, the sheets are telling a much better story. Um, all right. So before we move on, uh, are there any other horses in this race, John, uh, that you're looking at? And then who do you like? I'm looking at no other horses. And here are my selections. I like the five Wasuka Yoso, whatever his name, uh, her name is, uh, inexact is with the one poolside poolside with slim the three pharaoh's wine and the 11 dynamic pricing five with one three eleven and you can reverse them small all right and chad uh what about you any other horses in this race that you're interested in no nah, i think i think john hit them all on the head i agree with john on the four horses i'm just gonna put chad brown on top that's all so chad's going 11 with one three five Oh, okay. And Greg? Wait, he's do oh, he's, that's what he's doing with 135? He said he's putting the, yeah, the oh, same thing. Oh, those are all the Chad Brown, Brown horses? The 11 on top. No, he, Chad Brown is the 11. Oh, okay. He's putting the 11 on top of the 135 and okay. reversing them, I guess, somewhere. And I'm right. going 5 with 1311, and now we're waiting for you. I'm going 5 over 3811. Ooh. All right. KOD. Let's KOD. go. KOD. Let's go. Go to the three-year-old race of the week, Tampa Bay Derby. This will go off about 518 on Saturday mile and 16th. 
and we will start with the one heartened a 10 to 1 shot you got Pletcher you have a Jose Ortiz this horse is one for one at Tampa winning last time out basically going wire to wire running a 15 and the horse has improved pretty much in all four of his races 20 by the way was the first race on dirt 15 was the race that he won just recently uh, at Tampa he has a shot at 10 to 1, and at 10 to 1, you could certainly make a case to use him. I don't think he's good enough to win yet, but maybe. I mean, look, he was 2 to 5 in the main. He's coming off a of lay six also. Just pointing. He was 2 to 5. He's two to five in the maiden race last time. I like the fact that Jose Ortiz went to Tampa to ride him last time, obviously with this race in mind. And, and top pledgers had success in, in these races in Tampa. So um, certainly you're getting fair odds at 10 yeah. to 1. I don't know um, ultimately how good he is. Um, he's probably the, the least expensive horse. Uh, um, last year was Forte, so it worked out pretty good for them. Um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna play against this horse, but certainly I, I don't argue with people that want to take a shot on a Todd Fletcher ten to one shot in a three year old Derby prep race. Uh yes, absolutely. All right, the two. Everdoit is a thirty to one shot, ran a twenty, then a sixteen, and then a twenty, and then had uh who what what happened to the horse in the last race? He, he threw the rider or something. He was eased and never finished the race. That was the Sam oh, he lost the rider. That was the horse okay. that got loose in yeah. the Sam F. Davis. So the At only the start, Uber Villa, Uber Villa Gomez. Right. Yeah. The only thing yeah. this horse has done is uh, throw so, uh, is a driver off the uh, saddle. But anyway, this horse ran a 16 last year. That was the best we've seen from ever doing. No, nothing. All no. right. The three. No. Give me liberty. A 30 to one shot. Now, at least this horse, even though he hasn't run a 16, has improved in all three of his races. 23 last year, which was November, 19 and 17 this year in two runner-up finishes. So, again, at least he's improving. Yeah, listen, the trainer's deadly. He, he, you know, he's a great trainer. He, he wins a lot of races. Uh, doesn't have many good horses. He's, a bet, he's better, I think, with claiming horses than with these kind of horses. But, listen, he could certainly do it. The horse is lightly raced. He's never won a race. He's a maiden running yeah. against winners. So, you know, they picked this spot out. I would say the owner, Ken Ramsey, probably had more to do with picking this spot than the trainer. Robertino Diodoro. Hey, I'll give them credit, though. They claimed the horse first time out for $100,000. I mean, it yeah. certainly, uh, they certainly He puts were... his money where his mouth is. Yeah, I mean, not not paying his bills, but yeah, um, I I think oh I th I think uh, he's a cool horse. Why why not? Why not? I, why I don't, not? I don't he think says he any shot in this race. That's Great right. analysis. I don't think he has any shot in this race. There's no no shot. Oh, race. why not to no shot? Exactly. All right. The four is good money. Now uh, I don't think this horse is going off at fifteen to one. Uh, not with Chad Brown and Ira Ortiz Jr. going uh, side to side. Uh, only one race. It was a win. It was 15. Uh, only seven furlongs, though. But still, the horse is not going off at 15 to 1. Yeah, he well, defeated a claim victor that day, by the way. There you go. Even better. And by the way, you know, I mean, it means something that he's taking a horse out of a maiden win and throwing him right into a to, to a, a derby prep race. And putting on owner. Red Ortiz on him. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at the owner. <laughs> yeah, Cali made farm. <laughs> there you go. He's so, training for them now. This is a new yeah, one. Yeah. How many did they give him? I don't know. Why? What kind of a, what, what kind of story is that? Cali McFarm has been in the business a hundred years. You oh yeah, I mean I know that. It's like not knowing the Yankees. All those horses. But, different owner though. This is Brad Kelly. A different. It's a different owner. It's than a the different. Family. Yeah. It's not the. Yeah, oh, they okay. have different owners there. No, no. Well, the owner of Cali Met Farm now is a very reclusive um, guy. Um, who's actually the largest landowner in America, in uh, Brad Kelly, and and he's a he's a sportsman. He never goes. He 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 doesn't like crowds. He doesn't like people. He really keeps himself. He doesn't really do interviews. Um, but he he loves he loves the game and he loves to take shots. And um, you know he 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 had that horse Bourbonic that paid a big price oh, in the Wood Bourbonic. Memorial years ago that yes. qualified for the Derby and. You know, they're going to take a shot. Look, the horse ran well. I didn't think he was the best horse that day. I thought the claim victor was better. He's not a very big horse. 
Um, in fact, if you if you look at uh, Chad Brown's other horse in the race, it's going to look like uh, uh, Mini Me and uh, Doctor Evil side by side. So oh, um, he's got his work. He's got his work cut out for him. Look, the the, the thing with small horses um, in races like this is everything needs to go their way because he's going to have to take two strides for every one stride that domestic spending takes. And, and so for that reason, I'm just against him in this spot. And mm. it's, it's a big, it's a big ask on the stretch out, but you hey, look credit, credit goes. He, he did break his maiden at Tampa at first asking, which isn't an easy thing to do. Yeah. All right. Now one of the co-favorites is domestic product, the five at eight to five. You got Chad Brown and Gaff Leone. Now he starts with a 20, comes back with a 13, breaks his maiden. That's a nice little uh, uptick there. Bounces to a 22, comes back with a 12 in running second at the Holy Bull, John. Well, the 22 he ran was on a muddy track, so maybe you want to excuse. Oh, that's the door knock race. That was the day that nobody made up any ground. I, I don't care about that 22. It doesn't mean much. He's fine. He's fine. But the other favorite in the race that we're going to come to that we loved the last time in – one at Tampa, no more time is the horse we're talking about. And he's done nothing wrong. So, And he has the number as a two-year-old. So, to me, that's why I ended up on no more time. The, the thing with domestic product, and I think this is very, very important to note to, to our, our viewers out there, okay? Eventually, and you see this a lot with, with Steve Asmussen and Todd Fletcher and Brad Cox, you haven't seen as much from Chad Brown because he hasn't had as many three-year-olds on the derby trail. What happens is you try and get cute and you separate your horses and you're trying to run them in different places um, and avoid each other. And, you, you know, you don't want to have too many horses in the same race normally other than Brad Cox's four in the Gotham. But to, to me, um, I don't like this spot for this horse. I think he can win the race, but... He's he, he's a closer in a race that there's not really a ton of early speed in. Um, he he ran on well to run second last time out in the Holy Bull, but Hades was able to kind of walk the dog in front, and he came running late, and it looked better than it was because Fierceness was stopping so badly. I, look, I don't love this racetrack for this horse. He's He's probably the most talented horse in the race, and he should win the race. Um, I just don't trust the track. So he's probably still going to be my top pick just oh. because, but I just, I don't, I don't love the track for him. And that would be my, my one concern, but he's probably the, has the most ability of any horse in the race. Yeah. I mean, this is definitely down to the five and the seven and uh, you're speaking of no more time, the seven to five shot, the Angelo Castellano ran running uh, two 11s in the last three races, including the wire to wire win in the SF Davis win uh, about a month ago. And um, maybe we're going to get the same kind of dynamic from Sierra Leone and track Phantom, where we've got the horse that wants to lead and the horse that wants to close. And we'll see how this works out. I like no more time. He's done nothing wrong. His only bad race he had an excuse for when he blew the start and was rushed up. I mean, you know, he has the number as a two year old. That's why we loved him last time. And he came through, so I'm a loyal kind of guy, and I'm sticking with No More Time. And by the way, No More Time has uh, pretty much uh, been a favorite uh, in, in three of his four races. Domestic Product has, has not. Domestic Product, 14-1 uh, to 1 and 8-1 to 1 in his last two races. Well, they were running against different kind of horse. He was in the Holy Bull and Remsen, the last two races, Domestic uh, Product. All right, now let's uh, talk about a couple of, of the. Well, well, hold on. This has to be mentioned no more time. Look, he's training really well, okay? But there's two things that I've learned in this horse industry over the years that I've who's been. Who's training in really years. well, Chad? Chad, who's training really well? No more time. No more time. Oh, okay. So, so uh, who's trying to be the best Iowa bred of the year? Uh, we talked about Arizona bred. It paid 40000 for this horse. 40000 So. There's two things that I've learned in this industry. If somebody offers you a lot of money, sell the horse right away. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Okay. <laughs> never turn down the bag. Okay. And the second thing is never take a jockey off, off a win. Never take a jockey off a win. Paco Lopez rolled this horse super. They, um, they've made a move to Javier Castellano since Paco um, is, is probably going to ride Hades 
um, if it gets to that point to the both of them in the Kentucky Derby. So they wanted to get a new a new jockey in this jockey roulette that is the Kentucky Derby. But never, never, never make a change off a win. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's and big so for, karma. I agree, I agree with you. Re- for that reason, I just think the racing karma gets them here. But um, certainly rooting for, uh, for our man, Jose. All right. And then as far as some of the other top contenders, uh, if they're called top contenders, but let's, talk, look, let's take a look at Crazy Mason, the 12 to 1 shot. And the only thing we got out of Crazy Mason is a couple of 15s coming off a 16, running sixth in that SF Davis race. So I see no reason uh, to look at Crazy Mason, right, John? No, I don't like her. I mean, listen, the train is okay, does well at Tampa. Uh, Michael Sanchez is good as anybody out there, but I think he's, this horse is a little slow. Look, Michael Sanchez has given some great rides to Butch Reed on the Derby Trail. He won with Uncle Heavy in the uh, in the Withers, um, in the Gotham. He rode. I thought he rode that Maximus Meridian super. I mean, just wasn't wasn't able to hold on. But I thought he gave that horse a great ride last Saturday. I I will. This if you guys remember last time out in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, this was one of my top selections, my sneaky pick, and he was awful, absolutely dreadful last time. Um, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he just bounced. He had run many races back to back, close together. Uh, he he sprinted, then he ran in the allowance race where he overcame the really slow pace. I'm gonna throw a line through the last race. I want a price horse in this race. I want a horse who this horse is training at Tampa, day in and day out. We've seen upsets in this race before. I'm using this horse. I'm going to go back to the well one more time. I was at the wedding. I might as well stay for the funeral. Wow. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use Crazy Mason heavy here. Uh, thank you. Heavy! Rebound and hit the board. I, I, li- I like Crazy Mason in this race. Wow. All That's right. the eight horse. Chad likes the eight. Okay. Also a 12 to 1, by the way, is Grand Mo the first. And Grand Mo the first uh, trained by Victor Bar- B- Barboza. Oh. Uh, Sammy Camacho having a nice meet. Uh, first two races were wins. That was on synthetic. Went to turf and now on dirt at Gulfstream. Finished third. So this horse is all over the place. Now he's on dirt for the second time. And he's never won on dirt. So yeah. I would say this horse is ambitiously placed. The, the, pedi- the pedigree, you would think, should handle the dirt. But yes. um, certainly, look, they're, they're, they're on a fishing expedition. The owners, the owners would love to have a horse in the Kentucky Derby. The race was won last year by Venezuelans, so the Venezuelan contingency, uh, led by Jose D'Angelo and company and Victor Barboza, would like to uh, to keep the uh, the title in the country of Venezuela. So um, certainly, uh, a lot of Venezuelan trainers are uh, inspired by uh, the Puma of Gustavo Delgado from last year. And the ten is sturdy, an eight to one shot, running. Back to back 14s after opening his career with a 21 at Saratoga. So 14s aren't that bad, but this horse is also looking for his first win. And he's also outposted breaking from the 10 post. But... Yeah, that's, You're right. that's why I'd rather take the three at 30 to one. Yeah. Take the one at 10 to one. Um, yeah, I'm just talking about horses as who haven't won yet. Oh, okay. Uh, anything with the 10, Chad? Yeah, look, uh, we said it when we talked about Carbone last week, uh, or the week before, whatever. Matoli's are like one for for 20 going uh, a route of ground. Now, this horse ran a mile and eighth last time and almost got the job done. But at the end of the day, these Matoli's are, 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 have, have proven to be sprinters. And until they show me that they can win going two turns, I'm going to bet against them time in and time out. I'm, show, show me. So I'm, I'm, I'm from uh, Missouri, so you have to show me something, okay? All right. And by the way, Sturdy finished second to Domestic Product uh, last October, running a 14. Okay. The only horse, by the way, we didn't talk about was the six, the 30 to one shot, who has never run anything better than a 20. So that's why we didn't talk about him. All right. Uh, John, you're going with the seven over the one heartened, the four good money, and the five domestic product. Seven over one, four, five. Chad, you're going with the five, are you? Domestic product. No, he's going with Crazy well, Mason. No. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I've done what? dumber things. Uh, give me, give me Crazy Mason on top to shock the world. Oh, we, we've on seen top. The, the Derby, the Derby trail has been littered by things that make no sense from from pedigrees that make absolutely no sense. So why not have a son of Cole Front uh, 
enter into the Son of uh, Cole the, Fry. The derby picture. So, so you want um, Crazy Mason over? I want Crazy Mason over domestic product over, uh, not this time. So Chad no has time. eight with five, seven. I have seven with one, four, five. And Greg has. Greg has seven over one, three, four. Okay. All right. So that's Can I go to it. Sleep, boys. Thank you. Yes, you're allowed. Right, go ahead. I'll wrap up with Chad, John. Chad, drive safely. Everybody, thank you for joining. We'll see you next week. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. Be well and stay safe.